Last week, YT Jia, original backer and CEO of California-based Chinese-owned Faraday Future, stepped down as part of a restructuring agreement which sources say is an attempt to bring the troubled company back from the brink. And this week, the new company Global CEO was announced in the form of Carsten Brightfield, former vice president of the BMW i8 program and former co-founder of Byton. If we ignore the external similarities between the Byton M-Byte and the FF91, I mean, I remember joking at the launch event for the latter that it looked remarkably similar to the former, what does this mean for the company going forward? Will it be enough to move Faraday Future from its embattled sideline position to one of more promising prospects? Will it be able to gain back backing as a consequence of losing its connections with YT Gia and his long trail of debt? And what will Brightfield need to do in order to turn the automaker around? First up, I think we do need to clear something that some outlets haven't successfully reported yet. Namely, that YT Gia, while no longer the CEO of Faraday Future, will still have some form of an active day-to-day -day involvement with the company. Rather than be CEO, he's now assumed the role of CPUO. And if you haven't heard of that position before, I, I wouldn't blame you. It apparently stands for Chief Product and User Officer. This, loosely translated, likely means he's still going to have a very active role in the way the FF91 is designed and produced, probably the FF81 as well. Since YTG's experience is mainly in the technology sector, it does make sense that he's focusing on that part of Faraday Future, while Brightfield's years of experience in the auto industry should keep the car bit of Faraday Future ticking along rather nicely. But how you feel about that change will likely depend on how you think YT will still effectively be at the reins or not. Some investors may see this as not enough distance between YT's old role and his new one. Others may view Brightfield's appointment as enough of a change to push the company in a new direction. And to be fair, this is not the first time that a founder and CEO has been replaced, assuming a different role within the same company. It's actually a fairly common practice in startup land, as the person who initially runs the company may not be the best person to do so moving forwards. With the day-to-day -day organizational stuff out of the way, let's look at what this means for Faraday Future right now and in the future. If you spend any time on sites like Glassdoor, you'll see that the number one gripe about Faraday Future wasn't the smart, talented people that apparently made up the majority of the staff, but the management and, in particular, the previous CEO. And I should note here that if you want to really know what employees felt, go check out that site for yourself. I'm not going to repeat them all here, but it makes for great reading. Essentially, this move to replace YT with Brightfield should go a long way to change that, especially as Brightfield is an industry veteran who knows what's expected in the auto industry. But the biggest challenges now seem to be with funding and personnel. Brightfield will not only have to bring the FF91 to production, as well as apparently oversee development of the FF81 mass market model that Faraday Future has been promising us for some time, but it will also mean that he'll have to rebuild the team, either bringing people over from Byton, which is a likely possibility since auto industry executive musical chairs is a thing, or find them from elsewhere like Tesla or BMW or other legacy automakers. Without knowing a huge amount of what's going on inside the company, it does feel like Brightfelt is Faraday Future's last chance. But it's just not clear how much of a chance he has to turn things around. Either the fires have been put out and the company is sort of stable, he can build on that, or he's there to just make sure the ship doesn't crash too badly. Why do I say that? Well, prior to this switch, Faraday Future was in dire financial straits. The company was literally hemorrhaging money to the point that it furloughed most of its employees, while the majority of its executive team just left. And in May this year, Birch Lake, a specialist in bridge financing, agreed upon a $225 million bridge loan to help it restructure and convince investors, new and existing, that Faraday Future had a chance of survival. And while I remember, Faraday Future has also noted that Gia has paid off in excess of $3 billion of his debts over the last two years and has set up a trust fund of his Faraday Future shares 
to continue to repay further debts. Naturally, that fund is only going to be as valuable as the Faraday Future shares are, which right now... Eh. The bridge loan arranged earlier this year may have given Faraday Future enough breathing space to execute on this switch of CEOs, but I still think time is running out. Based on the fact that we look into running headlong into a global recession and the ongoing China-US trade war is doing nothing to help that, not to mention the number of legacy automakers bringing cars to market that essentially compete in the same space as Faraday Future wants to, I still don't see much of a future from Faraday Future. It feels like too much has happened, too much has gone badly, as always. I hope I'm proven wrong. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing. You can send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. You can feed our coffee habit with Kofi, or you can visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, behave yourselves and keep evolving.